1993, después de un avistamiento ovni, Laura Knight, investigadora, escritora e hipnoterapeuta escéptica en estos temas hasta entonces, llevó a cabo el experimento de canalización que dio lugar, después de dos años de trabajo previo de preparación, a lo que se conocen como las transmisiones casiopeas. El experimento casiopea se puso en marcha con la participación de un grupo independiente de investigadores abocados a la tarea de recrear las etapas del drama iniciático a nivel personal. Los resultados fueron poco menos que sorprendentes y en muchos casos con una validación de las profundas revelaciones de sistemas de pensamiento como el de Gurdjieff. Nos descubren un universo de múltiples dimensiones, infinitamente más complejo que el que nos han pintado la ciencia contemporánea. Develan además los detalles del más aciago secreto guardado celosamente desde épocas inmemoriables por las más elusivas sociedades secretas, la forma en que ha sido tendida la gran trampa cósmica. Esta es la historia del inmenso poder que ha sido sustraído de manos de la raza humana por obra de una poderosa inteligencia adversaria, originaria de una dimensión superior, de la creación de la Matrix como una poderosa ilusión para el control de la humanidad. La analogía más cercana a la visión de la realidad presentada por los casiopeos es gráficamente explicada en la película Matrix, donde la realidad se presenta como un programa de ordenador, una realidad holográfica o sueño, donde los seres humanos son como baterías de producción de energía para una máquina enorme de entidades transdimensionales que dominan el mundo y continuamente lo están manipulando para cosechar esas energías emocionales. La diferencia entre la metáfora de Matrix y la vista de los casiopeos es que proponen un ámbito teórico para físico como otra capa en la estructura del espacio-tiempo, a partir de la cual se proyecta nuestra propia realidad, la cual recorremos una y otra vez en un sinfín de variaciones hasta que tengamos suficiente. Se podría decir que los reinos hiperdimensionales son nuestro futuro en un sentido muy real. Esta realidad parafísica del espacio hiperdimensional, el reino de los programadores de la Matrix, de acuerdo con los casiopeos, está habitada por seres de ambas polaridades, positiva, llamados servicio a otros, y negativa, servicio a sí mismos, en los que algunos se han graduado de nuestra realidad, pero no necesariamente en el sentido de morir, y otros han sido creados y existido en ellas desde las etapas más tempranas de la creación. Los casiopeos enseñaron a Laura y sus amigos acerca de esta realidad de la Matrix, ayudándoles a enfrentarla y sobre todo a entender cómo funciona, para a continuación tomar la las medidas necesarias para ser libre de ella y de los entes parasitarios que nos mantienen prisioneros. Entre la información más interesante que compartieron los casiopeos a Laura Knight está la de la llamada onda que procedería del centro del universo, del sol central de la galaxia, y que según le dijeron, la energía que llega de dicho punto del universo hace que las hebras del ADN que los científicos llaman ADN basura se activaría y provocaría cambios en la humanidad, así como en el planeta tierra, pero dicha onda energética también causaría destrucción y cambios geológicos. Well, this is something that the Cassiopeians have told us. We don't have a full theoretical explanation for all of this. What we have are observations. We can observe that all the planets in our solar system are heating up the same as the Earth is. Now, we have the global warming alarmists who say that, you know, we have human-caused global warming. Well, if we have human-caused global warming on planet Earth, who is causing it on Mars, on Jupiter, on Saturn, on Uranus, on Neptune, you know, the other planets in our solar system? You know, how, are we, how is that happening? So we have evidence of that. We We also have evidence of great shifts in our magnetic field of our planet. You know, it's fluctuating wildly. Uh, we have evidence of strange things going on in the planet. You know, we have sinkholes, we have volcanic eruptions, we have, we have the, the Gulf Stream behaving irrationally or crazy. We have, uh, I don't know if you saw the picture of those cyclones over the U.S. and, and the fact that, uh, that nearly the entire U.S. was covered with snow except for the state of Florida. Uh, And, and Hawaii, I believe. Well, I think Hawaii even had snow. Um, and, and look at, if you just read the articles we post on SotNet every day, and we have categories for these articles. We have a category for earth changes. We have categories for things happening in the sky and the cosmos. If you read the scientific reports that come through and put the pieces together, you can see something big is happening. 
something big is happening. And we have the Cassiopeians telling us this explanation for it. This, you know, this wave, this, uh, this change in the cosmic environment. They've talked about the fact that there is a, co a companion star involved and swarms of comets that may or may not devastate the Earth. You know, we may get a few, we may get a lot, you know, it, and I think a lot of that depends on the state of humanity itself at the time of the event. So we have all of that. But what we still need is we still need a real theoretical structure into which to place all of these things that we can observe with our eyes. So that's where science really needs to come in and we need to get psychopaths out of science. We need to get science able to really do what they should be doing, which is exploring our reality and our universe and coming up with answers for what's going on. I mean, I have my husband, we have, you know, he's a scientist, we have numerous scientists in our research team. We do the best we can to produce the best work we can. But we need help. There are other kinds of sciences that we don't have necessarily represented in our group. There are, you know, f there are things that need to be studied, that need to be researched, tests that need to be done, and we don't have the time now. This should have all been done, but it's been prevented for millennia by psychopaths. We are in the condition we are in, in the state of ignorance we are in, in the state of war, in the state of economic depression, in the state of depletion of the resources of our planet because of the greed of psychopaths who thought they could create their own reality. Well, look at the reality they created. Otra información muy interesante y que en su tiempo fue muy reveladora fue la de los portales orgánicos. Estos portales orgánicos son físicamente como los seres humanos, pero no llevan en su interior un alma, la chispa divina procedente de la fuente original, sino que estarían huecos, seres sin sentimientos, psicópatas, y que ese es el motivo por el cual muchos actúan de manera tan fría y destructiva hacia otros seres humanos, personas que parecen ser normales pero que en un momento dado acaban con un gran número de personas. También estos portales orgánicos podrían ser poseídos por entidades interdimensionales para sembrar el caos a su alrededor e incluso ser poseídos por espíritus desencarnados que desean revivir sus vicios de cuando tenían un cuerpo físico. Esto sería uno de los motivos también por los cuales una persona no tiene recuerdos de cosas que hizo en estado de posesión. Los walking, por ejemplo, también entrarían en este grupo de portales orgánicos. Yo añadiría también a este grupo de los llamados portales orgánicos a los seres con un alma oscura o porción de la fuente de la oscuridad, que serían seres con apariencia humana pero con sentimientos malvados, psicópatas, que ya nacen así porque es su naturaleza. No tienen ningún desorden mental ni enfermedad de ningún tipo que les haga comportarse de esa manera, sino que han encarnado físicamente para crear el caos y la destrucción a su alrededor, forman parte de la corporación arconte de la oscuridad y se mimetizan entre los seres humanos normales, se camuflan, tienen familias, tienen trabajos normales, son buenos padres, incluso están en puestos de poder y de mando, pero llevan esa doble vida. My work on psychopathy has actually brought more attack against me than any other single topic I have ever touched in all of my research. I was attacked for saying maybe aliens weren't necessarily nice guys and here with our best interests at heart, but that was nothing. That was just basically like uh, a little rabble of people who wanted to believe that being abducted was a good thing. Uh, I've been attacked for some of my conspiracy theory positions, such as 9-11. Uh, but that, you know, that's still, it's, it's, it's minor. I mean, I would get death threats, I would get, you know, hate mail, I would get uh, fundy types who would write, you know, things to me like, you know, what a stupid person you are, you can't see. But usually that was all very low level. It was just like people on the internet or people who were in society who were, who basically just disagreed with me and they didn't have the good manners to do it politely. However, on the topic of psychopathy, When I began writing about that, when I began talking about it, that's when things got really ugly. Um, not only did I receive death threats, there were actual physical actions taken against me and my family. That's one of the reasons I left the United States, because things got physical. My children were harmed physically. Two of them nearly died because of these attacks. Uh, my dog was poisoned. 
dead cats were left at my door. Uh, it was really, my name was, my name and address was posted in some news groups on the internet with the suggestion that somebody should come and take care of me. Uh, things got very ugly. And that was because of my work on psychopathy. So the conclusion you can draw from this, I think, is that this is the main thing that the powers in control of our Earth do not want people to wake up to and be fully aware of. And the other thing is, is we can talk from now till the cows come home about hyperdimensional manipulations on our planet from aliens or uh, space beings or whatever. But we can't prove that. We don't have some forensic evidence. Well, we're trying to get it, and some people may have a bit or a piece, but it's always easy to discount that. And the thing is, is that their tools, in my opinion, are, and that's my opinion, I can't prove that, the tools of these hyperdimensional forces with designs on humanity are psychopaths and other uh, personality disordered individuals. They are so easy to use. Uh, they're almost like little machines, you know, little destruction machines and that you set down in, in society, wind them up and let them go. And they do exactly all the things that, you know, aliens being hyperdimensional beings and unable to hold a frequency within our reality cannot do. These beings do it for them. Okay? People talk about New World Orders, they talk about all these things, okay, well, and, and aliens being involved with New World Orders, or there being some kind of an agreement between aliens and governments to control society, uh, it, that could very well be true. And if it is true, it's because they have psychopaths to use, because normal humans, because of their evolutionary background, wouldn't do to other normal humans the things that these people in power do. Uh, and psychopaths, they have no conscience, they're born that way. We're not talking about something that is just people who are wounded by society. We're talking about a creature that looks human and mimics humanity, but in the end is absolutely not human. Who needs aliens when you have psychopaths? Well, if you want to change your personal reality and you work with several other people, uh, you know, your personal, you know, it, it'll work out. What will happen is, is, is you will imagine this or that or the other thing, and then a certain opportunity will come into your life, and you will or will not act on it. And then if you do, then certain things will change in your life and so on and so forth. So that's kind of like a practical way to talk about creating your, your personal reality. Say, say the reality you want to create is one where you have a job. So you visualize yourself having a job, and you visualize it so intently, and then you go out and you start, you know, reading the, the ads or whatever. I mean, if you just sit at home, and you never go out of your house and you never answer the phone, believing that you have a new job is not going to work. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Uh, it's remotely possible if you have a particularly powerful psychic ability that, you know, that maybe some person you knew 20 years ago will suddenly think, oh, I need somebody to sweep, uh, sweep the halls in my business. Let me call Joe. And, and you know, of course, you got to answer the phone. But you get, you get my drift here. So uh, suppose that uh, you want to change the reality, the global reality. You say there's 50 of you, and you decide you want peace on Earth. And you decide to visualize peace on Earth and to meditate and to send all this love and light to the people in the Middle East or the poor starving millions down in Africa or... Uh, you know, all those people over in Japan who are being irradiated, you know, okay, so there's a bunch of you. And you're sending this energy over there. And suppose that the energy of the planet is such that there are six billion other people whose energy does not accept what you are trying to impose on the planet that for their own purposes or their own soul reasons, they have chosen to go through these experiences to learn certain lessons. And here you are trying to change their reality, the reality of the planet, the reality of someone else. What do you think is going to happen? You're sending them energy. It goes at cross purposes with their energy. Imagine waves in a wave chamber. You're sending out this wave. And they've got this wave going, and their wave is like this. And your little wave is like this. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to grab your wave, and it's going to use that energy and turn it back and go that way with it. 